Do you have a spin wheel forgot in a corner at home that you don't know what have to do or don't know how to use it? Follow me in this video. I have some new tips to show you how to use this and make some beautiful yarns. Let's go to try this. So we will start by change my old stuff from my spinning wheel and I will show some parts of my spinning wheel and then I will put my new stuff to start by zero, okay? Follow me on this. The most important part for me here is not to see me, but see my spinning wheel, some parts. Yeah, yeah, my dog is there, sell me. My great Pyrenees. Sometimes he's barked so hard. I, I apologize in advance. So I was placed something because I've always been before and I go to show you what you have to do. First thing, you have a poly and you have a bobbin and I have a, a flyer. So this poly I have, I use to spin very thin and the poly you have a, the different sizes here. The smaller one is for spin very thin. So we'll, the big one is too bigger, too bulky one. So as small as the, the where you put your the cable here to spin, you spin thin. The biggest one is a big yarn. So this you use this to calculate the ratio of the, 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 the spinning wheel. So what is the ratio? The ratio, you can discuss this in another video because it's a very, uh, it is more than that I was talking now, but the ratio, you can resume this by the number of the turns of the flyers do while you, the big uh, wheel here do. For one turn of the wheel, how many turns the flyers does? For example, for one to nine, one to 20, one to whatever, okay? This is very important because you can use this, the ratio, to count how many twist you have by inch in our yarn by late you have to know this but by now is not important it's so very important now but you i i, I would tell, i would like to tell you to use the big one with a uh, beginner okay so i you put a new bobbin here i would tell you to put some uh, oil here first because the bobbin is new because he used to be a, a really a noisy sometimes I go to change my my poly and I put here I have a break because I have a Ashford Kiwi here that is I use I have two other possibilities here in my wheel, I put in the bigger one because I'd like to spin big, not thin. I have here around four feet of yarn. Cotton is good. I have an acrylic one. That's, that's okay. I slip knot in the end. And I don't put my knot on the end. I use to slide my knot here, around six, seven inches from the end. And if you see here, I put around the middle to the end of my bobbin. My knot is not in the bobbin because he's make some bumps. If I put the way of my, my, my guide 
strand here, it go to the that way. I go in the opposite side and I pass a second turn and I open my two sides and I pass through that again. And I have here my guideline. Good. I have this fixed. I have a, a, a bobbin placed. I have a guide yarn placed. Next step to pass my, my yarn here because I have a big yarn, a big thing I can use my fingers. However, you can use a, a crochet hook to pass here or something other to pass here. Uh, Ashford have a, a crochet that is sent with this or if you use another uh, spinning wheel you can use uh, that to pass through here okay uh, doesn't matter you can anything is okay okay uh, now what you have to do you have to fix the tension here Ashford have a tension that you have here a spring if I put out you don't have any tension and the tension, you calculate this for a millimeters of movements. It's not too much, just a little bit. Here I don't have tension. Now I have a little tension and you move this very, very slowly. Uh, now I can see, very, very slowly. Okay, no tension. Now I have, I start, no. Now I have a little tension because just to the tension makes that the how fast the yarn go into the bobbin. Okay, the tension is a subject that you can make a little video and talk about uh, the different kind of tensions for different sizes and types of spinning wheels and the blending of spinning wheels that we have. Okay, that's good. Now to fix the tension. It's very important to start to spin. My dog is playing. He's waking up. That's okay, Xiaomi. So now to start to check your tension. I don't have any tension. What's happening? My yarn doesn't go in. I have twist, but the yarn does, doesn't go in. So I have to get out my twist. Tell me. So I have to get out my twist and now I put some tension. Okay. I put some tension and I go to check if this tension is okay. My goal is, is to put my arm inside. Now it's going in and get out. But it is still getting a lot of yarn out before to go in. Do you see? I just go to see if this Y is it just because my yarn have lot of uh, twist or just because doesn't have tension. Ah, when go in, no, look that. I don't have so much tension. However, the yarn doesn't go in. So I have to add a little bit more tension and I go to try the another side. I get out my tension, I add uh, my twist, I add more twist and I go in and go out. I go in, ah, oh, it's not yet, look that. I have to add a little bit more. Ah, this noise is the missing oil in the flyer. Now I think it's okay and just try the other side. Oops, go in, go out. Look at that. That is the perfect tension because I have a lot of twists. Look at that. I have a big little pigtail because I have a lot of twist and my yarn go in and go out easily. If I get out this twist, look, I get out a lot of twist 
and my, my yarn is still going in and out from my tension. I don't have twist. However, more my go in and go out. That's a good tension. Okay? Before to play with yarn, I have two exercises to you. Okay? First exercise, you have to play with this bars from here. Look this as you look a clock. Here you have 11 o'clock and this side you have 1 o'clock. 11, 1. 11, 1. Okay? I'm Marcelo. I have just one trader in my spin wheel. No problem. You can play with one trader too. One, one, eleven, one, eleven, one, eleven, one. Okay? What are the exercises? With your trados and with your feet, you have to practice the control of your spinner wheel. So, you have to trade. 11, 1, 11, 1, 11, 1. The first one is this. With your dominant feet, if you feel left hand or right handed, you have to work with this. If you do both feet, okay? After that, you work down 11, 1, 11, 1, like this, down. And then you have to go up. Then, the second exercise is to go turning. So, I'm in 11. 11. 1. 11. 1. 11. 1. 1. It's very important to stop very close to the bar here. Not so down like I'm doing here, okay? You have to do very close up there. Very, very up there. To get better control. One, 11. One, 11. One, 11. The most important is, important is not to be fast, but have control, okay? It's not important to do this fast. Do with control, okay? After that, you have to start to do turns. One, 11, 11. We stop in 11. You do three turns, you stop in 11. Two, three, oops, 11. Now you go three, you stop and one, two, two, three, you stop one, uh, two, three, stop one. Oops, I can't, I couldn't. Why you have to practice this? Because sometimes you have to stop while you are spinning, do you understand? And stopping one and two, eleven, is the best way to stop and restart your spinning is the position of your trados that uh, can, uh, give you the position to restart pedaling, treadling to still easily treadling to restart in your spinning, okay? And uh, that is the best exercise you can do to have more control of your your spinning well if you're treadle, okay? The second exercise is the uh, an exercise that you go to use the, the guideline that you just adjusted and you have to use this. For this, you have to get an old yarn that you want to use for nothing I use my stash that, that I want to go to use in any other project. And uh, I have some cotton, some uh, 
uh, synthetic yarns. So I, I have, um, I suggest to you to use around 50 grams or three, two, three ounces of uh, a old stash that you don't, you, you can scrap. It. You can use for this. Any spin this, don't get a, a wool for a start. Get a, a, a yarn that, uh, an old stash in yarn to, to try. And I have to show you now uh, something. Is the angle of the twist. The angle of twist is something very important. When you spin for clockwise, you have a, a, a angle that you call Z angle. What is the Z angle? Is this angle that the bar of the angle on the twist form is looks like a Z. The bar on the Z letter. And when the spin in the counterclockwise, you have a bar look that looks like an S bar in the letter S. The majority of people who spins spins single yarns in the Z side and ply yarns in the S side. It's not a a roll, but the majority of people do this. So it's a no law, but is a no expressive law that most of people does. Okay. So here I have a, a yarn that I don't want to use. And I go just to show something. You have to get your yarn and you start you up. Here I have my guide yarn, and here because I have a, a, just an angle like this, I put my yarn inside, I ply like this, and with the twist, I put the twist go to attach my yarn like this, and I let this go, okay? So, so my yarn go to be there, and then, I let my yarn go and spin. I spin my yarn like this. I suggest around two ounces or around 50 grams of yarn to practice this, okay? So you try this and in the Z side after in the S side when you finished, okay? On the next video, you go to sub uh, replace the, the cotton yarn by the wool. And I go to start to show you the first technique to uh, spin yarn. Is that the first, uh, the short draw is the, is the first technique. But I have another short, a short videos in my channel you can check there to have more information while you cannot watch this second video for spin about the spin spin yarn